All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We are talking about the Chicago Bears because, folks, guess what? We haven't had football or we haven't had live football in forever. Yeah, we got training camp soon, preseason, less than a month away for the Chicago Bears. Uh, but we're in the deepest, darkest, dead point of the offseason here. So people are loving to write these hot take articles and uh, a lot of negativity around Caleb Williams, which is really surprising to me. Uh, but when you take a deeper look into it, you know, number one pick, uh, dead point of the offseason, people need to, people need the mortgage to pay. Somebody's got to pay the mortgage. So we're going to talk about why I think Caleb Williams, the Chicago Bears, could be much better than, I guess, some people think. And the reasoning for this is because I was just reading an article from uh, Mark Sherrill, you know, like the Hall of Fame center, and he was saying that the Chicago Bears are probably going to win like six or seven games. And here was his logic and take behind it. Williams is one of the slowest guys getting the ball out of his hands in college football. There's a lot of, if that number one dude ain't open, just go scramble around and make a play. That's not how the NFL works. You can't be a 50-50 on schedule, off schedule quarterback and survive in the NFL. Uh, you know, Caleb Williams is like leading the odds. He's the favorite to win NFL off offensive rookie of the year per DraftKings and a lot of other books. I think there's um, you know a lot of deeper stuff here, and we're going to talk once again about why I think Caleb Williams has a lot of things going right for him in this upcoming season. But before we do, if you guys enjoy it, be sure to hit that like button, hit that sub button for daily Bears content. If we could try and get this video to 250 likes, it would mean the absolute world to me. So um, once again, I was reading another article, and it was, you know, they I think it was actually they were ranking all the rookie QBs on their success level and Caleb Williams was actually middle of the pack and here was their um, explanation for it in the first three weeks the Bears faced the Tennessee Titans after they added a couple of stud cornerbacks the rapidly improving Houston Texans and an Indianapolis Colts team that finished top five in sacks last season interestingly there's also no veteran backup to help in Williams development nor an overly successful offensive coordinator calling plays Shane Waldron's offenses have never finished better than 13th overall Williams should be great but he's not automatic to get out of the gates quickly it's possible but a few elements may come into play where he should should be playing better later later in the year than earlier i think that's you know pretty obvious and that was actually a little bit more tamer than i was anticipating um you know it's interesting because the chicago bears schedule is like there's no divisional games until the second half of the schedule they have a really easier easier first half of the schedule than the second half because that's when you get into the divisional games and you're playing some you know more heavy hitters uh, the Colts are a really interesting football team, but that's week three. I don't really want to worry about week three. Yeah, they got a good defense. They have just a good team in general. But keep in mind, Anthony Richardson's completed like, what, three games in his career. The Tennessee Titans are interesting. Um, what, a, what I think a lot of people don't give the Bears enough credit for, actually, now that I'm thinking this through, is the defense. Um, I think even if Caleb Williams comes out here in the opener against the Tennessee Titans and struggles, uh, as long as he doesn't throw like two or three interceptions, they don't have, you know, like three plus turnovers. You know, Will Levis, there's a lot of question marks around there. Um, I'm excited to see Will Levis in year two, but you know, the Tennessee Titans just got rid of Derrick Henry. Uh, they're revamping their defense. It's a first year head coach. Um, you know, you prep for week one for so long, but I think the Bears defense should be good enough week one to win them the football game if Caleb Williams and the offense needs to lean on them a little bit more. Week two against the Houston Texans could be a really good test to see where they stack up against the playoff team. But then after the Indianapolis Colts game in week three, you know, even if the Chicago Bears are like one and two, uh, you know, you got a nice schedule before you got to get into the divisional part and you know before we even like start to mention the word playoff uh so anyways some ways in my opinion the chicago bears severely improved their roster for caleb williams to help caleb williams out or you know they just surrounded him with weapons and this is something that you know myself included everyone really had issues with the front office not giving justin fields what he needs and last year we saw dj moore come on over in a trade for the first pick in the draft uh to help out Justin and it made a really big impact but really folks outside of DJ Moore Justin Fields legs and Cole Komet there wasn't any consistency from offensive production or any offensive players so I look at a dude like like for example because DeAndre Swift is you know first and foremost to me you know Khalil Herbert Rashawn Johnson and Dante Foreman they rank 22nd or 21st in rushing if you get rid of Justin, like the Bears finished 21st or 22nd in total rushing 
if you get rid of Justin Fields rushing statistics. So it wasn't that good of a rushing team, even though the overall statistic is good because Justin Fields was one of the best, you know, top two rusher for quarterbacks in the NFL. So getting DeAndre Swift was a really big deal that you literally picked him up minutes after free agency began. He's coming off a career year. He rushed for over a thousand yards. He cannot only run it, but he's also a receiving threat. And, you know, I think where a lot of people are upset with the, you know, outside of Bears fans, the Don Dress Swift move is just the contract. It's a little bit of a bigger contract. But I don't think the Bears have had a, you know, versatile, proven running back like this in a couple of years. I like Khalil Herbert a lot. I like Rashawn Johnson a lot. Um, I would imagine Khalil Herbert's future is probably a little bleak, but I think Rashawn Johnson showed me a little bit. I'm a little inconsistent in his rookie season. I would like to see that receiving a little bit more this upcoming year. But um, DeAndre Swift, in my opinion, was a huge move. Probably a bigger move was just trading for Keenan Allen. I don't think a soul on planet Earth anticipated the Bears to land Keenan Allen when they did. I swear I checked Twitter and I was like, this, this has to be one of those fake Twitter accounts, right? Uh, so you acquired him in a trade with the Los Angeles Chargers in exchange for a 2024 fourth round pick. Uh, this past season... He only played 13 games, 108 catches, 1,243 yards, and seven touchdowns. I mean, Keenan Allen has one of the best hands in the National Football League for the wide receiver position. He's a freaking stud on third downs. And even if he's only in town for one year, just considering it's Caleb Williams' rookie season, I think this was a move the Chicago Bears needed to make, and that's literally exactly what they did, and it blew us all away. I mean, Keenan Allen, when he's healthy, when he's out there on the field, uh, he's one of the best wide receivers or one of the most consistent wide receivers in the National Football League. And then finally, I know he's a rookie, but Roma Dunes, a, you know, obviously, uh, you drafted him pick number nine in the draft. And it's funny because, you know, Ryan Poles, he just fell onto Ryan Poles' lap. And it's just funny, like going back pre draft, you know, making mocks and thinking, you know what, if a Dunes is available at pick number eight, pick number seven, you know, maybe make a trade up to, you know, make sure someone else doesn't snag him, make sure the Atlanta Falcons don't snag him. And the Falcons end up going with Michael Penix Jr. at pick number eight, and Roma Dunes is still available at pick number nine. Uh, unbelievable move. He's one of the best wide receivers in college football over the past two seasons. He had about 2,800 yards, he had 20 total touchdowns. And he can learn not only from DJ Moore, but Keenan Allen as well. Then you get a little bit more interesting, uh, a little bit deeper down in the wide receiver room. Felix Jones Jr. entering a huge make or break season. And then Tyler Scott, who had some flashes in his rookie season. Uh, but the Bears passing offense outside of DJ Moore and Cole Komet last year was extremely unreliable and consistent. So that's it for today. You know, Riff Ramble Saturday afternoon video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. But guys, give me your thoughts on Caleb Williams year one. Keep it a buck. How many wins are the Chicago Bears going to get this upcoming season? I'm going to go nine. Could easily see 10. And uh, if Caleb Williams is what we think he's going to be, uh, they might win more than 10. So that's it for today. Hit that like button. Hit that sub button. Give me a projection. We'll see you soon.